Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yekaterina Gurekova, and today I'm a representative of uh, University of Lorraine and the research center Laurier, located in Nancy, France. Uh, so uh, before we start, I want to give a brief uh, motivation to the project. So we work uh, with bird models, but first of all, what bird models stand for. BERT is a bidirectional encoder representations from trans uh, transformers, which uh, as of uh, the date of me preparing this presentation had over 100, uh, uh, 10,000 citations, the number which I constantly need to update, which we can consider to be an industry standard uh, in the field of natural language processing. However, uh, it is used in various cross-domain fields like text-to-image, text classification, protein structure prediction, which I unfortunately won't be able to give a lot of details on, but it's just uh, interesting to know that the BERT models found application in so many very different fields. Uh, however, uh, BERT being a small large language model still is a large language model, and interpretability of parameters of such models is still a challenging task. Uh, I also want to uh, direct your attention to uh, several trends that are prevalent right now in the field of natural language processing. Despite this graph being a very old one for our domain, uh, it is dated uh, by 2020. What we can see here is that the number of parameters started exploding around 2019. And right now, commercial level models can have hundreds of billions of parameters. On the other hand, some researchers predict that the training data, especially high quality training data, will be exhausted in the coming decades. With this in mind, we propose to direct our attention to existing uh, models and uh, try to understand better what information is encoded in the uh, word embeddings. For this, we propose uh, a metric called INF-ENC to compare embeddings produced by different models. And outside of the scope of this presentation, we attempt to identify dimensions of the word embeddings that encode target linguistic information. French being a relatively uh, high resource language, we were lucky to, uh, to be able to choose different models to work with. So here is the list of the models that we worked with. Uh, what is uh, needed to be understood is that Flaubert and Camembert models were trained uh, only on French data, while Embert and XLM Roberta and Distelbert are largely multilingual models. Here, all the models are sorted by the number of parameters with the smallest models appearing on top and the largest models appearing at the bottom. And you can see the range of parameters, even though it can uh, reach half a billion uh, parameters, is still relatively small by uh, today's standards. So uh, right now I want to talk about uh, our data set pipeline creation, how we work with the uh, obtaining word embeddings. For this, we took a word from French vocabulary, for example, épice, which stands for spice. It was passed to a bird-like model uh, for tokenization. Uh, we obtained the uh, tokenization results, uh, removing uh, CLS and beginning of the string tokens, as well as SEP or end of the string tokens. We only retrieved the token uh, related to the word itself. We retrieve the weights of the uh, last layer of the model. And by this, we created a neat table of words with the values of all dimensions. What needs to be highlighted? With this approach, uh, we decided to remove uh, words with multiple senses uh, because uh, the <laughs> French language uh, has a variety of words that can be both for example, nouns and verbs. And since one of the target features of interest was part of speech, we decided to remove this ambiguity and keep only single sense words. Uh, additionally, as can be seen in this pipeline, we were picking only one token uh, for, for the word. So if a word was tokenized in multiple tokens, we decided to uh, uh, disregard this words for the scope of this project. However, we believe it needs to be considered in the further work. And additionally, invariable words, so the words that do not have 
a gender or do not have a plural form were disregarded as well. So with this cleanup, uh, using the morpholo-lexical resource, which is a vast vocabulary of French words, uh, we obtained much smaller uh, vocabulary of our own because either some words were uh, tokenized by uh, multiple tokens or uh, they were invariable or, and so on and so forth. What needs to be understood here? So uh, in orange, or I don't know how this uh, color is looking on the uh, display, uh, we highlight the models that were trained only on French language. And as one can expect, we managed to retrieve much larger vocabulary for the models uh, trained only on French language because large multilingual models need to dedicate space to uh, a lot of languages, not only to French. Therefore, we retrieve much less words uh, regulated to French there. However, what needs to be seen here, despite that Flaubert, Small, and Camembert Bays having relatively similar sizes, we can see that Camembert Bays uh, produced smaller vocabulary, and this can be potentially linked to different tokenization types. Uh, for example, Flaubert uses byte pair encoding for the tokenization algorithm, and common bird base, don't want to lie, sentence piece. Uh, so as we can see here already, there is a big difference in how models are behaving. So having obtained the vocabulary, we propose this pipeline. We create a binarized linguistic feature. Uh, we find sets of dimensions that are most likely to encode the feature and compare different models. So how do we create binarized features? Uh, since the scope of the project was relatively small, we picked a small subset of linguistic features. So gender, number, part of speech, and uh, two semantic categories, act and person. Gender, number, and part of speech was conveniently already provided by Morpholo, uh, and act and person semantic categories were extracted from another resource called Sequoia. So uh, just to give you a visualization how the binarization happened, uh, it was one, sort, uh, one hot encoding of uh, each uh, categorical feature. So basically we had a feature called uh, gender feminine, gender masculine, number plural, number singular, and so on and so forth. And in total, we had 11 features. So combining all our dimensions and all our features, we propose two types of tests. We propose dependency type tests and interestness, interestingness tests. So uh, I will talk about this more uh, right now. So what, what are dependency tests? So here we want to test if uh, a certain dimension, uh, so as you can see, we take dimension across all the words of vocabulary and uh, a certain feature are independent. For this, we try First, ANOVA test with p-value below 001. So for ANOVA test, we split the dimension into groups, one associated with uh, feature vector values equal to zero, and another one with feature vec uh, vector values equal to one. So we have these two subsets, and null hypothesis is that uh, means of this uh, two groups are equal, and H1 would be that means actually not equal. So uh, if the means are not equal, we can assume that there is some sort of effect of the uh, feature vector on the dimension. And uh, for mutual information, uh, it is more straightforward. We just take the vector uh, dimension vector and the feature vector and compute mutual information. If mutual information is higher than zero, we consider that uh, there is some sort of dependency between the vectors and add this uh, dimension to the set of mutual information dimensions. So as you can see, we here uh, have two sets of dimensions, ANOVA dimensions, uh, mutual information dimensions. And then we decided to ask what are what dimensions are found by the both tests and found an intersection of this and de dependent dimensions. Uh, there is another type of question we can ask. What are interesting dimensions? So uh, for this, one of the ideas was to train a classifier, retrieve the weights related to each dimension, rank them, and uh, get top alpha percent. Because here, unlike for dependency tests, there are no clear guidelines. What is the... Uh, 
cutoff for dimensions that we need to use. So we decided to use uh, a changeable parameter called alpha. Uh, so for the classifiers, we use logistic regression and perceptron. And similarly, we uh, checked correlation between uh, dimension and the feature vector and use the same alpha percent cutoff. So we tried different alphas, 1%, 5%, 10%, 25%, 50%, and 75%. And similar to dependency tests, we uh, tried to find the intersections of these sets as well uh, for each alpha. So with these approaches, we had 27 subsets of uh, dimensions for each uh, feature. And uh, we would use these subsets to predict the value of feature vector on unseen data, choose the, uh, the best subset of dimensions and its best achieved accuracy. So this would be our target metric in FEC. Since the data sets were relatively small, and we wanted to avoid any sort of biases, we decided to use five-fold cross-validation. So all data was separated in five folds and tested on the unseen fold. So now we can go to the results. So first results are in regards to number. So uh, as you can see here, the subset uh, that we retrieved uh, for Flaubert large generates the accuracy of uh, 0, uh, 0,956, which is quite significant and quite comparable to uh, all dimensions. So here, uh, the accuracy of for Flaubert large on nouns uh, was achieved on subset of 100 dimensions out of original 1,024 dimensions. Uh, another interesting point here is that Flaubert large uh, with the rank one shows comparable results to Flaubert Small, one of the smallest models. Uh, another point that I want to highlight here is that Disselbert, the uh, largely multilingual model, uh, a very small model comparatively, uh, shows results that are comparative to uh, Flaubert Bayes models that were trained only on French language and are larger. So, uh, Overall, uh, the size of the models doesn't appear to be predictive of performance on this metric, and as well as uh, training data, whether it's multilingual or not multilingual, appears to be not predictive. Another thing that we can see here is that common bird base, <clears throat> the, the French model, uh, shows quite poor results. And once again, we can bring this back to the tokenization differences, and we will discuss this a bit more later. So if we uh, compare the uh, gender results, we can see that uh, there is a drop that from what we see, saw before. Before we saw that a flubber large generated 0 0.956 uh, accuracy, and here it dropped to 0 0.895. First of all, uh, one of the explanations for this is that uh, number is much more formally uh, deductible from French words. So for example, ending on S or X uh, can be easily understood by models and by tokenizers, while gender is much more elusive concept and needs to be understood either by combination with <clears throat> articles or adjectives. So here the results uh, drop significantly. Uh, and here we see the same trends that Disselbert shows comparative results to Flaubert Small, uh, of Flaubert Bayes, Flaubert Small shows comparative results to Flaubert Large, and Common Bird Bayes performs quite poorly. Uh, if we have a look at part of speech, the results here are slightly better than for gender. Uh, however, we can see here the first interesting part is that uh, Flaubert Small, the smallest model, achieves the highest results for uh, detecting adjectiveness of words uh, among all uh, models. So if we uh, go from uh, more grammatical features to semantic features, here results are even poorer. Uh, and uh, Flaubert Small, once again, performs the best on both tasks, uh, with the, uh, Flaubert Large showing the worst results out of all previous uh, features. Uh, now one can ask uh, whether or not this numbers or this metric is 
representative of anything at all. So here we compute the correlation of the infank results with the classification. And as we can see, it's pretty high. And uh, as you can remember, we use logistic regression uh, in our data set uh, selection. So here it is represented by LR. And funnily, it's one of the lower uh, results that we can see here uh, in correlations. And uh, one can see that MB, that stands for naive bias, shows highest correlation with infant results that we have as, ever seen. And similar to the numbers that we saw before, uh, infant uh, correlates more poorly with semantic information like semantic act and semantic person, which can be a signal of ambiguity of this feature. So uh, I want to highlight that this was a very small scale project that had tons of limitations. First of all, we only investigated bird-like models, so we didn't uh, investigate any other architecture. And second of all, we only investigated French language. Uh, secondly, uh, the uh, set of linguistic features is limited. Thirdly, uh, bird models are famous for changing the uh, representation, the word embedding, depending on the context. And in our situation, we disregarded this due to uh, limitations of the project, but this needs to be considered in further research. And the last point, and I think one of the most important points, is the impact of the tokenization needs to be studied. Why common bird uh, performs much worse than Flaubert, even though they were trained comparatively the same. So uh, some main takeaways. Uh, so smaller models can perform on par or, or better than bigger models, as we saw with Flaubert Small. Multi or single language models can achieve comparable results. So this is what we saw with Distal Bird and uh, Flaubert Base. And tokenization appears to have a significant impact on the encoding of target features. Uh, <clears throat> the highest results were absorbed for number encoding. So uh, yeah, whether or not the words have S or X in the end appears to be easiest task. Uh, for most models, the achieved infant for gender is higher for adjectives than nouns. Uh, for most models, the achieved infant for part of, <laughs> part of speech is the highest for nouns. And for semantic categories like person and act, uh, the infant scores and the correlation with the classification results becomes lower. So this is overall what I have, and now uh, to the question. Let's think about this.